Welcome to Yeshua Sabbath Church. It's good to have you here today. It's good to see your smiling faces. Uh, gifts for the sanctuary. We'll we'll talk about uh, two mites. You know, the widow gave two mites. That's part of our uh, Torah teaching today. We'll talk about that. And it took them one year. They brought their gifts to the sanctuary, the gold, the silver, the bronze, and then they built a sanctuary and overlaid the wood with all these precious metals. It's a great teaching. It took them one year to build it, okay? Welcome to Yeshua Sabbath Church. We're also on Ben Loman TV, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Okay, there's a new slide I put up there. The Apostle Paul went to church on Saturday. All you got to do is read Acts 24, 14. I don't think you should divide the land of Israel. This is a vision by someone that could happen. The Terumah gifts for the sanctuary. Where is God's sanctuary today? Raise your hand if you know where God's sanctuary is today. Okay, see several people. The Apostle Paul says it's right here. Solomon's temple was destroyed. Herod's temple was destroyed. Why did, would God allow his temple to be destroyed? That he took such pride in. We hear what we're going to talk about, what was in that temple and how they built that temple for a year. It was a glorious thing to witness and to see. But he allowed them to be destroyed. And they were destroyed because of sin in the in the temple well if the temple's here today would in his second coming would he do the same thing would he destroy this temple if he's done it in the past if there's sin present in their lives and that's what i try to impress each week make sure you're reading your scriptures i think daily i think you need to read your scriptures daily and if you're not reading your scriptures daily, th that would say to me that you do not fear God. Because he's the one that can destroy this temple. That doesn't mean you're going to hell. That doesn't mean you're not saved. You, you may have committed your life to him, but if there's sin in your life, and you, you don't see it because you're not in your scriptures daily, uh, it could be rough. Okay, so last week we talked about the plumb line, and we listed a lot of things. We talked about intentional murder, unintentional murder. Watch that video from last week if you didn't see it. Uh, uh, as I start Teruma today, uh, it's offering for God's house. The first one I'd like to read that I got here, and I have a few handouts if anybody wants to study if you like to study, ten, you can't glance at 10 pages and think you've done this justice. But if you like to study, I've got your handout up here. Just come ask for it. That means you look scriptures up and kind of do your own thing with it. That's what Lana does. Um, she'll take it, and she does her own little study all week on it. So anyway. It is a command to gather every Sabbath. There are 59 of them. Have a convocation. That word is H4744. It means mikra. At Yahweh's house. Is this, is this Yahweh's house? Yeah. It is. You see it everywhere. You feel it when you walk in the door. It's special. A public place and worship with readings, song, dance. We just did that. So that's good. Leviticus 23.3. The Sabbath is a holy convocation, assembly, public meeting. We'll be reading from Exodus Day, 1 Kings, and Mark. Some good stuff in Mark. So Yah's house, Yahweh's house, has a, a gate or a door. Basically, that's your... Lord, be my Lord. Uh, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. The gate is Yeshua. The gate to get into this temple that we're talking about, that we're building here. See, we decide what's in our temple today. The temple's here, so it's a free will offering. We decide what's in that temple. 
We're going to talk about it. What's in that temple? Okay? So Yah's house is a, has a gate or a door. And that's Yeshua. An altar of sacrifice. A water basin to be clean. A light or a candlestick like a menorah. A table of bread called showbread. A table of incense. A container or ark called the ark of the covenant. And think about this for a second. God came down from heaven. He did not have to do that. But he wanted to pick a people that would honor him and follow him from all the nations, all the people of the earth. And he chose Abraham's descendants. Abraham's descendants. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob chose them. He stands before them on a mountain called Mount Sinai. He stand, he's up there in the clouds and the thunder and the volcanic stuff. And everybody's afraid to go up there and see this God. And this God gives the Ten Commandments. He says, if you'll just do this, these Ten Commandments, and they turn into 613, which we only have to obey about 200 of them. But anyway, if you'll just do this, you will live in peace. You will have a good life. It is his heart. Think about it. What was in the Ark of the Covenant? God's heart. What he spoke, other than maybe a little special word he's given to individuals here at different times, it was still a small voice. It wasn't a loud, thunderous voice. Here he's given a loud, thunderous voice. They say that every nation heard it all over the world. Okay? They were so afraid. But it's his heart. He says, put the Ten Commandments, the two stone, tablets of stone, inside the ark. Okay? That's his heart. And so my question is, do we have a heart that, that's like God's heart? And I say the Ten Commandments, you know. Understanding them the best that we can. This house that we're building, this sanctuary inside here, is a shadow, uh, is a tent or a temple. Today it is our heart. So what's written on our heart? I say four things minimum. We do the uh, Acts 15 slide earlier. Exodus 25, 1 to 7. Yahweh tells Moses, Speak to my people. God's saying, speak, Moses, speak to my people. Bring an offering, a gift, because I want you to build this uh, sanctuary like I showed you what I wanted it to look like. You saw it in heaven. I, I, you know how, what it's supposed to look like now. Build it. So Yahweh wants our best. Don't you see? I mean, I'm not bragging or anything, but don't you see that here? He wants our best. And this was the best I could do. Um, I didn't even know what I was doing. If I had my choice, I'd be fishing. But Lord says, start a church. <laughs> and I didn't. He tricked me. I'm telling you now. He tricked me. Lana knew me when I was fishing. Okay? And so I gave him what I think is my best. But I had many people, other people help me too. So that was a good thing. Uh, this offering is a free will offering. We decide what's in there. We decide if we want to do commandment number four or not. We decide that. We honor this command today with a tithe, with an offering. And I say that it's a tenth or more. Okay? The tithe is actually a work. When you... When you put something, give to the church, that is a work you're doing. When you keep the Sabbath, that's a work. Those are called good works, okay? And Yeshua rewards us in Revelation according to our works. Tithing is a part. Read Revelation 22, 12. Uh, verse 10 to 22. This is Exodus 25. Yahweh says, build me an ark. And I'm saying, do you cherish the words of the Ten Commandments? Do you cherish them? Okay? Love the, those words. 
get into the meanings in the Bible. You know, you, we have the Library of Congress, Strong's. So we got all these resources now. You don't have to go here or go there to learn about God. You got 20, 30 different translations on your Bible search tools. We have no excuse for not knowing more, uh, as much as we can about, the God, about our Lord. And I say the only thing inside the Ark of the Testimony are the two stone tablets. There are verses in the New Testament that say the manna and rod staff that budded. But there's also a verse that says it was placed in front of the Ark. But that's more detail here. I won't get into that. Exodus 25, uh, 23. Build me a table of showbread. What was that? This table. They baked 12 loaves of bread. It would not get moldy because they used frankincense near it. Okay, it used frankincense. And, uh, and I think it stood for the 12 tribes of Israel. It also stands for the word of God. The bread. I am the bread of life. I am the bread. I am what sustains you. And I say that's the word. What would our life be without the word of God Amen. in our lives? Amen. I can't. I mean, at one time, I called myself heathen when I was younger. I did not have the word of God in me. I'm looking back on that, I'm saying, how could I have even existed without it? You know, but, I, but you do. But the sad thing is there are thousands and thousands of people out there that's in the boat we used to be in that don't hear from heaven, maybe, until they're ready to say a sinner's prayer. Verse 31, build me a lampstand, menorah of pure gold. Exodus 26, verse 15. This is interesting. It says the planks for the wall support were made of acacia wood. It says... Um, commentary on it says that Jacob when he left Canaan and went to Goshen planted the acacia trees to cover to for to build this temple one day in the tent of meeting he planted the trees so Jacob knew they would be leaving Egypt and how many years did it take for those Acacia, I don't know how big this acacia tree get, I don't know, but he planted them. And they used that wood to overlay uh, as they built the tent of meeting. This, uh, we have to be one with Yahweh's heart to live in the future temple in the new heavens, new earth. And I say, does your heart reflect God's heart? And I say, the ten laws. This temple for God is destroyed if sin is present. Solomon's temple, Herod's temple, and, and our temple could be destroyed if sin is present. So I'm saying, it's, to me, I, I see it as black and white. Do we eat kosher? Do we keep the seventh day Sabbath? The sabbatical and the jubilee years. The seven annual feasts every year. Passover, unleavened bread day one, unleavened bread day seven, Pentecost, Yom Teruah, atonement. Tabernacles, day one and the eighth day. Those seven, do we keep them every year? It says to assemble. If we don't keep them, are we a hypocrite for saying, I love the Lord? When I said my sinner's prayer, when I said my sinner's prayer, I'll follow you, Yeshua. And Yeshua says, if you love me, you'll keep the Ten Commandments. That's what, exactly what he said. If you love me, you will keep the Ten Commandments, my Father's Ten Commandments. That's what he said, because he said, I and the Father are one. And so I, was I a hypocrite at times? Yes, I was, because I wasn't doing that. I wasn't, I, I said I loved him, <laughs> but I didn't do what he said, okay? And I just listed a bunch of things. Have you tested yourself? It's an individual thing. You're not going to go to heaven based on your mama's. Your wife's faith. Exodus 27. Build me an altar. And the verse 9. Make me a courtyard. This house or temple of Yahweh has three compartments. There's the outer courtyard, the inner courtyard, and the holy of holies. Now, if you're outside the tent of meeting, you're called a heathen. <laughs> okay, 
You haven't said a sinner's prayer. You haven't gone through the gate of Yeshua into the outer courtyard. You're in the out. You're out. But he'll hear your prayer if you confess your sin. And now you're in the outer courtyard. But there's a verse in Revelation. I might get to it on page 8 or so. It says, count who's in the temple. But leave out the people in the outer courtyard. Why does he say that? The people that come into the outer courtyard where the brazen altar is, but they're only saved. They are never sanctified. You, you know the difference? Saved is, okay, Lord, you're my Lord. But sanctified means I'll do what you say. You know, I'll do what you say, Lord. And I'm, I don't have to tell you what the plumb line is. The Holy Spirit will tell you what the plumb line is. That's the great thing about that. You know, I don't have to speak about your sin. The Holy Spirit will show you your sin. You know, but I'm saying, ask him to show you. I, I think that's part of it. Uh, make a courtyard. Okay, so, so let's say now, let's go to look at these courtyards. The outer courtyard, you got your altar and you got the basin to wash yourself clean. But they really just really don't wash themselves clean. But if you do, then you can go into the inner courtyard, and that's where the menorah, the table of showbread, the altar of incense is. That represents sanctification. So you get cleaned up in the outer courtyard, and then you move into the inner courtyard, and that's called sanctification. And if you are sanctified at that point, because everybody, we decide what's a free will offering, right? We decide if we're going to get sanctified or not. But if we do, we can go into the Holy of Holies. And that's where you hear directly from the Father. You hear directly from the Father. Did anybody hear directly from the Father this week? Okay. Don't you want that more and more and more? Don't you want to hear his voice plainly with no confusion? No confusion? Because a lot of times... I hear something, I'm thinking, oh, that's God. And uh, then there's confusion about it, and I'm thinking, oh, well, maybe that was just my heart thinking that. Maybe that's the adversary trying to pull something over on me, you know. But isn't it wonderful when you hear it it's so plainly, you know it's God. And I'm saying that is the anointing. He's anointing you to hear his voice, and you know it. And you live by it. It's, it's a precious thing. Um, so I'm saying heathens can, can hear the voice of God outside the tent of meeting. Outside the temple. Some Christians hear the voice in the outer courtyard. But they never go any further. Then some Christians hear the voice of God in the inner courtyard. But they never go any further. And then there's some people that are able to go into the Holy Holies. Okay, the half Torah, the prophets. First Kings 6, in the month of Iyar, the second month, Yahweh told Solomon to build a tabernacle, a house, a sanctuary, a temple. A sanctuary, that's what's inside us. He told Solomon to build it. And this is a very interesting verse here, ready? It's First Kings 6, 12. If, first word. If you walk in my Torah and keep my commandments called covenant. Because remember at the base of Sinai, God, Moses told, God told Moses to go tell the people what I said. He tells them, and they said, all the Yahweh has said we will do. They entered into covenant. But then they broke it pretty quick. So here, I'll have to try. God's telling Solomon, who saw the greatness of his father, who established a kingdom called Israel, and uh, became a very prosperous and very uh, strong country. And he's getting it to his son Solomon. And so God talks to Solomon, and Solomon hears his voice. If you walk in my Torah and keep my commandments or covenant, then I will not forsake you. I will not forsake you, Solomon, if you do the Torah. 
Isn't that what Yeshua is saying? If you love me, keep the Torah, keep the commandments. That's the same thing he's saying. Okay, I'll go to the Brit Hadashah or the New Testament. So how have Christians built the temple inside of them? That includes us. How have we built this temple? It's a free will offering. We decide what's in this temple. The widow woman, was Mark 12, 41, 44. The widow woman with two mites is keeping the commandment to tithe. Did you hear me? She understands that she's commanded to tithe, but she's maybe penniless, busted, doesn't have a lot of money. So she takes two mites, which is a small amount of money, and puts it in the offering. She's keeping the commandment to tithe. And I'm saying that probably stretched it for her. It was hard on her to do that, but she obeyed. And then the other people are running around putting, dropping gold coins, and the, the rich people are dropping stuff. It makes a loud noise. Don was telling me those two mites were silent, hardly made a noise. There's something special about that. When you give uh, out of your heart a free will offering to obey the Lord, it's special to the Lord. and Because uh, you're not making a big deal about it like they were. Has Christianity, I'm talking about Christianity as a whole, not an individual church somewhere, broken the oath to follow Jesus when they say, well, I don't have to do that Torah stuff because Jesus freed me from the law. He freed me. I'm free to do anything I want. Where there's scriptures I can give you in Zechariah that says, you brag about your freedom and I don't hear your prayers anymore. You know, you brag, well, I know God. I can do anything I want. And he says, just go ahead and do it. I don't hear your prayers anymore. Okay, listen. The temple and the priesthood in Yeshua's day were not Torah observant. You say, oh, they kept the Sabbath. They kept the Sabbath. That's the only thing they did, and they did that out of tradition. They did not keep the Torah. Okay, they may have eaten kosher, and they may have gone to church on Saturday, but Yeshua rebuked them because they had a lack of love. Uh, they were bribing people, doing all kinds of wicked stuff. Remember that Yahweh told Solomon, if you, if you will walk in my Torah, keep all my commandments, then I will not forsake you. Malachi 3, 1 to 2. Behold, I send my messenger, Elijah. He shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall come suddenly to his temple, house, sanctuary to us. So here, John the Baptist has the spirit of Elijah, and Yeshua is there, the king is there. No one recognizes him for, for whom he is, but he says, he says, repent. And do the Torah. They weren't doing the Torah. He says, repent. Do the Torah. Produce fruit, Torah, worthy of repentance. He was telling the religious leaders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, he was telling them that. Because it says here, uh, who can stand when Yeshua appears? He'll be like a refiner's fire. He that overcomes, I uh, say, do, does the Torah, shall be a pillar in my future temple, sanctuary, the last day called the eighth day, Revelation 11. But leave out the court which is within the temple. Measure it not. Because they aren't doing, they're, they're saved, but they're not doing the Torah. And then at Revelation 11, it says, uh, the temple house, the sanctuary in heaven was opened if they could see the Ark of the Covenant. How important is the Ark and those two stone tablets? Here you see it in Revelation. 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 to 8. Yeshua takes vengeance on everyone who does not obey the gospel of Christ. So how did Christ live his life? He says, I and the Father are one. Actually, I spoke the Ten Commandments. That is the gospel of Christ. It's the Ten Commandments. It's the same gospel given to Abraham and Moses. 
I'm going to talk to you just a minute about translator bias. Because after Yeshua came, then the translators, years after his death, translated what that might have been Hebrew or Latin into the King James, okay, and other versions. I'm going to give you a good example of translator bias. This is uh, Colossians 2, 16 to 17. It says, Let no man judge you about meat, drink, Sabbath, but, the, they use the word but, the body is Messiah. What are they doing there? They're pitting, they're, they're pitting Yeshua against the Sabbath, the new moon, and the holy days. Because it says but. Could the word have been and? And they used the wrong word because of their theology. They used you or replaced the law. When he said the law is not done away. You sh they should have used the word and. That's translator bias. So here's the way the verse should read. Because I hear this thrown up at me a lot. Let no man judge you for keeping kosher meat, drink, holy days, new moon, and Sabbath. For these things are Yeshua. Hamashiach. These things are Yeshua. The holy days. The new moon. See. They should have used and. Another good example of it is John 3.16. If you believe you shall inherit, inherit eternal life. But verse 36. Go to Matthew. There's John 3.6. Go to John 3. Read verse 36. Somebody read verse 36. Read John 3, 36. It gives the word, the definition of the word believe. Uh, earlier I said 316, if you believe you shall inherit eternal life. Somebody read verse 36. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God in, abides in, on him. C.S. Lewis, he's a writer, he said that obedience is not legalism. Obedience is a symptom of salvation. So if you're saved, then part of the fruit of salvation would be Obedience. And uh, Galatians 2.16 says, We are justified, saved by believing in Yeshua. Is this what the verse is saying? Well, even the demons believe in Jesus, right? They're not saved, right? So, in a way, what is John 3.16 really saying? Whoever has the same faith as Yeshua shall be saved. That's how I read it. If you have the same faith as Yeshua, you shall be saved. So our temple, house, heart, must look like the one Yahweh told Moses to build, or our works are dead works. That's James 2, 26. To build God's temple properly on the inside of us requires good works. Good works are required. Read 1 Peter 2.12, Revelation 2.5, Revelation 2.23, Revelation 2.26, Revelation 14.12-13, Revelation 22.12. Behold, when I you shall come, I will give every man a reward according to their works. So they're good works and they're bad works. I say good works is doing the Torah. Bad works is saying I can do anything I want. Do not say, I live under grace, and that works are not required. It does not compute. To me, that does not compute. That does, that's, not, not like, that's not one plus one equals two. It doesn't add up because it's taken out of context. So truma, or offerings, this sanctuary that we're building on the inside of us, the God's house in here, what are your offerings to Yahweh? Torah, doing the Torah like we talked about, or are you doing some other 
gospel that some other pastor teaches. 